So an engine swap. A lot of people have been asking what the plan is. Well, it's just a 300 TDI straight swap, but for a much healthier one. So today, I want to show you the parts I bought for the new swap, the engine that we're going to be putting in, and the reason for getting rid of the old one. So stay tuned. So this film is basically going to be why do an engine swap and the preparation we've done to actually do it. So basically this 300 TDI is on its last legs. Uh, I've done a few tests recently. If you get the turbo spooled up quite nice and high, it drives pretty well, you know. Um, it's very smoky, but it pulls well enough so it could manage it. But this year I'm planning on doing quite a lot of um, trips on the motorway and lots of off-roading and I just don't want the hassle of being you know a seven hour drive away from home and the engine going because it's, it's very likely I've had advice that that could happen this year so I just thought it's best and with the advice from Ben he thinks it's best to just chuck a new one in so what I did was I bought a new new to me second hand engine from a guy called Lawrence and I'll put the link in the description below to his website and his number if you ever need to get one for yourself. The one I've got actually is a 130,000 mile Disco 1 300 TDI but what makes it a little bit better is that it's got a good history, it runs well and also it's had a new head put on it from a Wolf Defender with 30,000 miles on the clock so it's had a new head gasket, new manifold and intake gasket and it's been checked over and the, the bores look really good. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. This one's done 200,000 uh, with no history and the piston rings are worn. So it's really down in compression. You can feel there's no power low down. I'll try and go up a hill and it'll just bottom out so quickly and um, it's just, it just lacking really. Like I'll try and bog it down now. It just, it just black smoke comes out the back and it bogs down. There's no nothing to bring it up out of the lower rev so that's a bit of a shame really. So a lot of people have also been saying, why don't you just rebuild this one? Well, having an engine with this many miles on the clock, uh, no history, like I said before, and when it's already in this sort of shape, uh, yes, obviously it's nice to keep the original engine and rebuilding is always an option, but when you don't know about an engine that well, then there's no real point in doing it because it's a bit boring spending all that money, which is probably more than a new sort of second-hand engine. I'd say financially, it's better off just getting a replacement engine that you know is generally going to be better and you just can swap it out and you can do it in a day, basically. So we got a delivery of the new engine uh, on the trailer. Lawrence delivered it for us, which is really nice of him. Dropped it at Ben's workshop. Thankfully, Ben has a forklift, so we could just drop it on the floor. And it's just sitting there now, nicely ready to go, which is really good. So once we got it into the workshop, Ben and I went around it and had a look and made sure to order a list of bits and pieces that just for safety and for ease while it's out, we can just work on it then. Just get a few bits like timing belt, viscous fan coupling, a few bits and pieces like that just to make sure that the engine's running smoothly and we won't have to do it in the future. So I'll throw you to Brookwells where I got those. Back here again to grab some more bits and pieces. And as I just said, engine swap and uh, I'm going to grab the bits now. So there you go, just grabbed all of these out of Brookwells and uh, it's quite a big box. Let's take a look at them. So we've got boost hoses there, silicon ones, they're new. They're going to be a little bit more performance, which is good. A blue <laughs> as well. Uh, we've got a vac pump gasket and lift pump gasket here. That'd be good for when we replace them over from the old engine onto the new one. Diesel filter, obviously just good to do a service when you're doing a new engine. We've got a oil filter there. These are two branded ones. Engine mounts, be good because you know we're moving a disco engine into Defenders, good to just have new engine mounts anyway. Orcs belt, again another service item, always good to just check it on while you're there. Thermostat, you can see that one there, good to check one of those in, you know, might as well do it while you've got it all out and uh, save the hassle in the future. In this box, it's a timing belt cover, the uh, bearing on the old, on the new engine was a little bit, um, a bit wobbly and loud so swapping that one out. Got the viscous fan center there, a bit of play in that as well. Make sure to keep it all nice and smooth. Oil, obviously, always need a good bit of oil when you're changing an engine, you don't want to use your old stuff. Timing belt kit in there, obviously you've got the belt, you've got the gaskets, you've got the new wheels and bearings, studs to go on there. 
but that's really handy and that'll be good making sure that you don't need to do that again in the future performance air filter we've gone for that was recommended to me and uh yeah it'd be quite interesting maybe a bit more airflow got a strength for exhaust and uh you know just get a bit more sound coming through there be good and any power we can get and any more breath through the engine so it cools down nicer then that's always a plus so ordering those bits and pieces just a peace of mind you know you're swapping out an engine you want it to just run as well as you can get it running really so those things will be chucked on when we put it in and it's just nice to know that all that's been done and you can tick off the service list and we'll just keep it going for longer which is great when i got boris you know the engine seemed all right i hadn't driven any slash many 300 tdis before but i knew they weren't you know fast bits of kit or anything too exciting but uh, it generally worked fine um, and unfortunately I'm going to have to admit to maybe overdoing it on the maintenance so I put some of that oil um, sort of flush through just ran the engine for a bit with it in there and I feel like that really cleaned out the engine and all the sort of the crusty old oil and soot and everything like that where needed but that was actually creating a seal potentially in some places so uh, yeah unfortunately now there's a lot more breathing through the piston rings there is a lot more oil getting into the the combustion uh, there's oil pouring down the sides of the block and that is just stuff you really don't want to be doing um, so I I don't know but I feel like that is partially accountable for the sort of condition of the engine currently so I I know a lot of people do stay clear of that but I would recommend to stay clear of that as much as possible really um, let these engines just take over don't bother them too much. Obviously just keep them oiled up maybe every six months, oil change, filter change and a good service every year. Uh, that'll keep them going. I've learned my lesson now which is quite funny. I would consider just keeping this one in until it completely dies but as I said before hopefully with Covid, fingers crossed, uh, becoming a thing of the past. Uh, then we're going to be doing some more shows, some more trips, doing lots of filming, hopefully Scotland and Wales and things like that. And I just don't want to be that sort of person in the convoy that lets everyone down. Because I've been that person before and it's not very fun. So changing the engines is going to be a bit of preventative action and also it's going to drive so much nicer as well, which is great. So right now it is Saturday and Monday is the day we're going to be doing it. And we're going to be doing a whole film try and film as much as possible. I'm going to be basically Ben's assistant to the engine swap so it will be and I'm going to be doing quite a few bits of hands on stuff and getting oily but I'm going to have to try and film as much as I can. It's not going to be an instructional video, it's more entertainment and hopefully maybe persuading people to do it or not doing it. I just want it to be maybe informative and fun to watch so I'm not going to film every nut and bolt being pulled out and tell you how to undo a screw. <laughs> So hopefully this video is quite uh, helpful for you if you're planning on doing something like that. Uh, it's a good bit of information. Um, I have made this separate because I don't want to pile all of this into one video for the swap. And I want to try and keep that video, you know, generally engine swap related. And then I'm going to do another one in the future. Afterwards, a sort of month down the line, on a reaction of how much better it is and how that engine actually is coping and is there anything else we had to do, like say, any oil leaks or anything like that? So I'll, I'll be doing another one in the future as well. Me rambling on in the car is never going to be the most exciting thing, but you know, I've been trying to find a few engine swap videos on YouTube. There are a few 300 TDI ones, you know, but there's no full engine swap videos, and I just thought it'd be good to talk about, you know, why we're doing it and my decisions and stuff like that. So hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time.